What's going on everybody? Welcome to the stream and tonight we are live with the championship matchup of the March Ancients Tournament. Let me just go ahead real quick, let these guys know that we're live and that they are good to get going. So tonight we have Graham uh, running uh, Genova of the Moon, uh, where after initiative is rolled you can roll 2d20s. Uh, place them on Genova and remove them end of turn, and then react after melee or range strike roll. Remove a d20 to change it to a removed value. So that's what he's doing right now. He'll put those counters out to show what those d20s are going to be. And then Celtic is running Fotrucka, who, uh, frankly, everybody knows both of these warlords, but Fotrucka is just annoying, keeps all your Nothrog alive, uh, lets them target additional ranks away while they have wounds on them, and Gunda just falls perfectly into that strategy. So... Uh, a couple slightly control-based, maybe a little bit more annoying uh, matchups than we like to face, but it got both of them to the championship, so it ended up working out. We see a figurine of protection right off the bat from Genova, and Celtic is going to follow up with an incentive. So, like we, likely wounding uh, both of these front rank Gundas. Potentially not, though. Uh, maybe doesn't want to wound him this early, but it looks like he's going to. He's marking him. So he's got those minus ones. So both those Gundas can take a swing, and they can go straight for those Justinians as well. Um, so they're going to be swinging at plus eight attack. That is going to be pretty big. Uh, actually, no, it's plus thirteen. So if they're going on those Justinians, it's anything but a one. That and that'll collapse Genova's rank. So that that's going to be huge. That is a big first turn play. We have Midge and Forged Cake in the chat. What's up? We got New Jersey representing. Yeah, I saw a lot of people talking about how many times he drew incentives during the tournament. Now, just seems like he had like 10 copies in his deck. I mean, it's such a good card. <clears throat> and there go both of those Justinians. So neither of those rolls close enough to force the Justinian react. To make them miss. Removing both counters on Yigra's altar as well to give it plus four. So it would have really been anything but a one, even with the Justinians. So he's able to jump right over top those Dilchant Keepers and their defend and their cancellation and their annoyingness to just go straight and collapse the second rank, bringing Genova up. It looks like Grandma's going to pop out the Figurine of Protection. Uh, keep in mind as well, both his rolls this turn were relatively low. We have a 4 and a 6, so I'm not sure how useful those will end up being since, I mean, uh, those Gundas have pretty big attack now, but we'll just have to wait and see if he ends up having an opportunity to, opportunity to use those rolls this turn. <clears throat> so figuring a protection can suffer wounds instead of Genova should those Gundas choose to swing over top again since they have wounds on them. Uh, Celtic is going to play a Sithusk now. Just a uh, nice and easy spend order to draw a card. Pretty good, pretty significant. Helps him find his fun cards like incentives. We got a mass blessing from Graham that is big most of the time, but just the fact those Gundas are able to swing in additional rank away isn't as big of a deal this time. I maybe would have put that on rank two, but I get wanting to use those Dilchant Keepers to maybe try and swing and take out some Gundas. Swinging at plus zero, they're definitely not going to have a high chance of hitting, although Gunda is only 9 AC, so slightly better than 50% chance without the Mass Bless, so... And that's what he's going to do. I imagine he'd go for a wounded one here uh, to prevent from rolling over the top. <clears throat> also worth noting, uh, swinging at plus five, he can also just use either of his dice to make this a uh, instant hit as well. Have to imagine he's saving those for later in the round, but that's something he can at least use. So he's going to hit one of the wounded Gundas. Oh, man, and uh, Fortruck is going to react. Now, unwounded, or I guess only one wound Gunda is going to swing, and he's going to use Axe of Faith to go for an additional wound. So I imagine that is going to go on Figurine of Protection. Um, oh, the Dilchant Keeper is going to exhaust the Axe of Faith, though. That's a big play. So he can't take out the Figurine of Protection with that. Um, so... <clears throat> One wound on the figurine of protection. I have to imagine this other Dilchant Keeper is going to swing at the two wound Gunda to prevent that from uh, swinging at figurine of protection again this turn. 
And I saw Josh King talking about it too, but Yogoro's Altar is just such a good start for uh, the Nothrogs. I'm not sure how it has three charges. Oh, he killed the Sithusk. Okay. I must have missed that play. But yeah, it, it's just such a very good card. And obviously sees more play in Nothrog than Chosen. Uh, Amends is such a better level two card for the Chosen. You really don't see it all that much, but should be limited. Yeah, I... I haven't seen it in play too much. I know it's really kind of taken off this tournament and maybe a bit in strategic too. But yeah, six skill. Okay, let's talk about that for a second. A level two character with six skill that can cast from dust to dust, like that is really good. Yeah, amends uh, also needs to be reserved. It's or uh, limited or whichever one is can't start in play. Unless it already is, and I'm mistaken, but I don't think it is. I mean, I guess to be fair, it, it is for the two worst factions in Dwarves and Chosen. Uh, not to spread much hate, but, uh, I mean, he is... If he was with, like, Nothrogs or something, I think he'd be banned in a split second. But it does give at least a decent bit of support to Dwarves and Chosen where they need it. Dwarves generally more defensive, so the offensive is just a nice little boost for him. Uh, and Chosen just bad most of the time, and able to maybe give him a little bit of a push. So <clears throat> I can see how it uh, amends, makes sense, and isn't as busted. But Yogurl's Altar, and the fact that wounds can't be reduced either, if it was just the plus four attack, that's good enough on its own. Doesn't look like we've missed all that much. Actually haven't missed anything. That's oddly peculiar. <coughs> I wonder what they are discussing right now. Or if maybe one of them lost internet connection. Maybe a DC? I'll bet one of them just forfeited. That's got to be what it is. It makes the most logical sense. <clears throat> yeah, I do not know. So for those in chat, I have not watched either of these decks play. I know what pretty much a standard for Trucka deck looks like um, since I watched a couple of them play in Strategic. But what is there out of this Genervo deck that you guys know about? I saw him uh, kind of give his rundown of his matchup against Zod where he had... Uh, Premonition and stuff like that, but is there anything to look out for from Graham here? Uh, any spectators know if figuring of protection counts as wound reduction? I would say no. <clears throat> Since figuring of protection suffers the wounds instead, it doesn't say reduce the wounds and suffer them. Uh, does chat have anything to say about that? I know Midge isn't a big rules person. I, I don't know Bobby personally. Yeah. So I suppose that's what they were discussing. Uh, just the how we talked about from Yogoro's Altar, how it says wounds may not be reduced, but it's not like uh, Soothing Waters, where it says reduce the wounds by one, Inflict a wound on a different character. And they are back at it. So Graham is going to swing, try and take out this last Gunda, I think. I can't imagine he wants to put a wound on the other one. And, I mean, that 12 is a good roll, but with the Mass Blessing, I maybe would have just made it the 4 or the 6 to try and force the hit. But, um, who knows?
let's see. Graham swung, and I'm not seeing any wounds pop up on any of the Gundas now. <coughs> I just wonder if they got a different ruling from Discord or something, and they're discussing that now. Let's take a look here. Rules questions. Well, they didn't get another response there, so I wonder if Celtic is just trying to decide something after that Dilchant swing, because, like I said, Graham rolled and it hit. <clears throat> Only at 10 minutes so far, something tells me this is going to be a long matchup with these pauses. <coughs> and just the fact that Graham is trying to run a control deck, but if Celtic gets incentives off the bat, it's pretty much over for Graham. I wonder if there's... Some other rules thing that's happening. Hey, hey, Gracchus is subscribing. Thank you. Incentives is stupid. It is. Yeah, it's a very good card. Subscribing for two months now. Thanks a lot, Gracchus. I appreciate it. I honestly have no clue what's going on now. Uh, I, I don't like sitting in a match Discord while people while people are playing. It just feels kind of rude to me. Um, I, I know some people are okay with it. But then just trying to talk over them, even if I'm muted on stream trying to talk over them or uh, listen to them, it, it just seems like more of a hassle than it's worth. So we don't have that insight during the stream tonight, especially if I have like a co-commentator or something like uh, Midge in my last video. Uh, trying to have a co-commentator with two other people, again, even if we're muted, just is such a hassle. <clears throat> so we do not know why they're paused. And I really don't have much else to talk about, so I will talk about this. Um, so April kicks off the Build a Warlord event. And much like Chris Vack does the... Oh, they're taking an intermission. Okay. There we have the official word. Uh, so like Chris Vack does the uh, reject deck corner with Iceman at the end of some months. Uh, me and Zant Primus will be doing a similar type of thing. I haven't come up with a catchy name for it yet. Uh, but sometime before um, Build a Warlord kicks off. Just because my work is going to be a lot busier lately, and I don't know how much I'm going to be able to stream, and I know I'm going to miss the May tournament, the Good, the Bad, and Ugly, I want to get as much content out as I can before that point, especially for people like Gracchus and Midge who subscribe, and uh, just to try and build up and accumulate these uh, Dragon's Horde rares as well. Uh, and be hopefully be able to ship those out sometime this summer. So be on the lookout in Discord. I will post when that ends up being, but we will be looking at some... Uh, custom Warlords that Zant Primus and I have built, and we'll be playing those decks uh, prior to the Build a Warlord event. So you might also possibly see uh, maybe some good combos, maybe something you want to build around, or uh, uh, what to build to prevent. So like I said, be on the lookout for that. And uh, it looks like they're back from intermission. Uh, Celtic did just discard the uh, Two Wound Gunda, so that Dilchant Keeper hit finally took effect. And Celtic is going to play a Torin, so one card left in hand, but he can still pitch it with Torin, uh, unless it's something he wants to play and keep Torin till later. Now Celtic says one more minute. So it's going to be back to Graham's turn, but he'll probably just wait to play until Celtic gets back. And I will hold him to this, so uh, since he said one more minute, we have about 50 seconds. Oh, now he's going to... wait. <clears throat> Graham must have passed, okay. So we see the Jackals from Celtic, I assume spending back, or Back Alley Tavern, okay. So Graham was holding that Back Alley Tavern, hoping that Celtic was going to play Torin, uh, or use his ability, rather, to get those two cards off of it. And unfortunately for him, he did not. 
Uh, so he's just going to have to spend the figurine to get the one card. And Yogoro's altar are going to kill the Gunda that's going to die. Uh, it doesn't matter, but if he had the Heroes Gambit, he would have been able to kill Jenerva with the Gunda. I forget exactly what Heroes Gambit does. I thought it was just an attack, which with Gunda would be one. If he had Axe of Faith, maybe? Or am I thinking of a different card? So we see a second Mass Blessing before the Jackals pop up. I guess not wanting to hold that for next turn, knowing it's not going to do a ton, maybe? Oh, okay, additional wound from Heroes Gambit. Yeah. <clears throat> Figurine is not once per turn. Okay, I forgot about the additional wound from Heroes Gambit. Yeah, that with Axe of Faith definitely could have killed Jenerva, uh, but Figurine of Protection would have been able to redirect it. <laughs> also, he did exhaust the Axe of Faith as well, um, so that... Ended up not working out, so it would have just been one strike. I know, I guess, if he had another incentives. No, he has to spend for that, though. So, Gracchus being Gracchus, man. Talking specifically about the ruling. Yes, uh, if, we're, if we're talking about it specifically, he, in theory, he can kill Jenerva with Hero's Gambit. <coughs> Celtic, unable to kill Dilchant Keepers with their plus 10 off the two Mass Blessings. Both players are going to end up passing. So Cel Celtic definitely in the better position here, but Jenerva is going to be ready this round. Uh, interesting to note that Graham didn't use either his 4 or his 6. Uh, not entirely sure why, especially when that uh, Jackals was swinging at the end of the turn there. Celtic got a 13... Yeah, I don't know why he didn't use those just to set the die real low. But he got a 4 for initiative this turn, and he gets a 2 and a 15. So something to set a die roll nice and low, and something to, I guess, more or less confirm a hit. <clears throat> you girls' altar is going to... Swing. I can't believe that thing can attack, too. And it has a plus two. Like, why isn't it plus zero? It's it's a piece of furniture, as, as someone else noted. I think Graham said that. It's a piece of furniture. Why does it have attack? Why does it have any skill? There are literal human beings with less attack than this stupid table. I don't believe it. So one of the Dilchant Keepers is going to die from the table. Oh, I never realized those creepy-ass skeletons holding up the corner of it, too. That's a nice little touch. Yeah, it should say it not able to perform actions other than the following. That's what I was thinking. Like that's When I saw the may not equip items, I was like, that's all it has? <clears throat> Does not make sense. I guess 4E got a little bit overzealous with their support of the Chosen. Still wants to return for the React. You're saying for Dilchant, or it should be once per turn on the Altar? Because that would make a lot of sense too if it was once per turn. Altar? Was it eroded, or is that what you're saying it should be? <clears throat> Once per tourney, there you go. I like it. Should be, yeah. So we see a Tauren, Iskar, and a Teamer from Celtic. But that figurine of protection is no longer next to Jenerva. Teamer going to stun all the way up, but uh, being stunned, he's unable to defend or repost. Or I guess in this instance, he really can't repost, but unable to defend. Looks like that Dilchant Keeper is going to swing at the Jackals and gets the 18. So he couldn't set it to the two, because that would have missed, despite being even. We're going to see the Soothing Waters onto the Gunda. That is brutal. <clears throat> so 
So the Gunda now going to be powered up with uh, no Dilchance or anything like that to swing on it to uh, take it out. So it's going to be able to swing at uh, Genova. We see a Premonition. So that is probably going to cancel that Soothing Waters then. Okay. So that's solid. So I guess the Jackals does end up dying. Premonition is just such a mean card. I mean, I hate playing blue and magic, and that's essentially what it is, is a counterspell. That's just so unfriendly. Draw hate is bad enough. Then you have other card hate, too, and it's only level 3. I mean, freaking Torin can do that if he wants to. Uh, I'm not sure why it's going to discard. Let's return to hand. And then that Gunda doesn't have a wound on it. He did discard the Jackals. Oh, he pitched it with Torn. Okay. Uh, but that Gunda still should not have a wound on it. That yeah, makes sense to pitch it with Torn since he can't play it this turn now. I see a Cardinal Skellis, so he can move himself forward, I guess, if he so chooses. He could move Teamer, but I'd probably want the defend next to Genova, if possible. Or maybe just move him up so he's not stunned next turn. I don't know. <clears throat> it's going to be back to Celtic now, who's in a better position to begin with, and has four cards to, uh, to Graham's one. Moving Genova back, can he... Oh, it is forward or backward. I was thinking, is it Zaros that's Zaros the Mist that's just forward? So yeah, he can pop Genova back. So that's pretty good. Celtic gonna swing probably on Genova here. That's a six. I assume he reacted with the Eagle's Altar. Yeah. Oh no, he's gonna take out the figurine of protection. Okay. So yeah, he can slide Genova back. Then uh Torin will fall. But it looks like he's gonna use Torin's ability first. Ditching the Maurog's first test, that's an interesting one to have in the deck. I considered that in uh, my first online tournament with, I think it was Epic Edition, whichever one the Maurog's first test is from. Uh, I considered running that in my deck, ultimately decided against it. But when it's defeated, you get a dragon in your first rank. That's pretty nice. We get the Davinus. Um, probably not going to make as big of a difference in this game as it can and does in other games, but still a solid card nonetheless. I mean, if worse comes to worse, you can stun it up and it's a 3 hit point 15 AC guy. That's not terrible. We see the return to us getting the Gunda back. Gunda's just so good in Filtrucka. And there's the Cardinal Skellis sliding the Torin backwards, or uh, uh, Genova backwards. Torn will fall to correct, and now the Jackals will come up for Celtic. No cards left from Graham. It looks like the only things he has left to potentially do are to stun up Davinus or Cardinal Skellis. We'll see if he does, but he'll probably just end up passing to Celtic for the rest of the turn, who's got swings from Jackals. He's got a Gunda he can play, can swing with. He can, uh... That Gunda still should not have a wound on it, I don't think. Didn't he soothing? He's soothing waters to the Gunda. Well, he's killing it with the Eagle's Altar to begin with. And the strike only targeted within one rank. So I guess it ended up being fine. But I think that was a little mistake that uh, they didn't catch after the premonition on the soothing waters. So looks like Davinus did his thing to stun the Jackals. That's a good play. So that gets two strikes out of the way. Maybe hold ranks a little bit longer. So three cards left from Celtic, and we know one of them's a Gunda. So another one's a Cargreg. Very good Nothrog. Uh, even not on Daybreak, it's just a level one body with two attack. is not terrible, but that Daybreak ability is so good if you can get it on the first turn. Going to stun the Cardinal Skellis up just to help hold ranks a little bit more. And he's going to swing with the Cargreg, removing a charge from the Yggdrasil's altar, targeting Dilchant. 
That'll take out the Dilchant, causing Cardinal Skellis to fall. He's got the Gunda. There it is. So I doubt he has Acts of Faith or anything like that. And I, I don't understand why Graham isn't using the counters. He hasn't done it either turn. He could have... I don't know if he could have forced misses with that too, but I know he could have last turn. Celtic ended up missing to begin with. So we see another Jackals that's going to jump up. Let's see if he uses this counter here. After a melee strike roll. Melee or range strike roll. But it doesn't say yours. It's any. So he has three strikes here. Good lord. He killed the stunned one with the Agro's altar. This is getting ridiculous. Five charges on that sucker now. Wow. Woodrow subscribing. Clerics. Yes, this is the matchup of the clerics. And thanks for the sub, Woodrow. Thanks for stopping by the stream. I appreciate it. Battle of the evil clerics, actually. <clears throat> got a dev and we got a Nothrog. So three strikes left this turn. We have a plus four. Probably see a react from the altar here. Making it a plus eight. I mean, maybe he'll choose not to. We'll see. Plus four is going to end up missing. Oh, he did react. That's a plus eight. So that'll hit for one. And, like, again, it... I don't want to sound like a broken record, but it's the end of the turn. I just don't understand why Graham isn't using those counters, unless I'm missing something. Why he's not using those D20s. <clears throat> I also don't understand how either of those missed. He rolled a six. and a, Okay, he did use the two there. Okay. Fantastic. So there's one of them. And obviously not going to use the 15 here uh, with this Gunda. So the first one was a 6, and that's a 14. Okay, so that's going to miss by 1, the first roll. And the second one, he forced the 2. So that's pretty solid. That 12 is going to hit, though, especially removing a charge. And I wonder, yep, he's going to kill the car, Greg. Throw one more charge on it, on the one in the front rank. And that'll be turn. <coughs> Why did he... Okay. Sounds good. I... I don't know. I saw that Jackals come out of nowhere. My eyes are playing tricks on me. I was just checking back in chat to make sure he didn't drop it into play. I was really confused. Thought it was some discard pile. Uh, Mondays. Yes, this is game uh, one, Dennis and Kane. They are at... Uh, my stream is showing 28 minutes, but they paused for... Uh, at least five or so with a rules question. So they probably paused their timer. So yeah, this is game one. Uh, we saw the incentives first action from Celtic to take out Graham's second rank, uh, collapsing Genova up, taking out both Justinians, uh, ultimately able to spend back and bolster ranks a little bit, but Celtic still in better position here. So we see a litany of the dead uh, from Celtic. And that was one. Uh, if you watched my matchup against Karura last turn or, uh, in the last round of the tournament, that really had a strong effect against me. And now another incentives from Celtic. So we're going to see the Gunda. Uh, that'll be wounded. And the Yigrel's altar will be wounded. And Fortrucka will react. Typical turn one for Fortrucka. Pretty much. Yep. Three wounds on both those Gundas. Called it good. Uh, worth noting as well, Graham's counters are 11 and 12 this turn, so not really able to force a miss on Celtic. Uh, and not able to swing himself, at least for now, so really not the best rolls right now. He definitely wanted low there. Now let's see. Were both of those going for Torrin? They were. So Genova going to collapse up. That'll cause Davinus to fall. Pretty hard to force a miss. It is with the uh, Yegrel's altar. Yeah. <clears throat> it is difficult, but he did have the two last turn, and if you have a one, you can force a crit fail, I guess. But 
it is really difficult uh, with the Gundas with the Growth Altar. Not as bad with the Jackals of Morn, but when you get that plus 5 attack, you're swinging at 8, you bump it up to 12. That is really difficult to force a miss. You would need a 2 to force the miss on the 15 ACs in the front rank, or uh, a 3 to, uh, for Genervus 16. So discarding Litany of the Dead, name a non-Warlord character card. Characters with the name may not perform actions or enter play till end of turn. I have to imagine either Jackals or Gunda. Oh, and he's going to exhaustion that, so it doesn't matter. With two charges, Gunda swings, eight, five, four, four. That's true, I didn't think about reacting multiple times, which makes it even more fun to play against. <clears throat> definitely bring your exhaustions and build a warlord you're never going to know what kind of broken shenanigans you're going to run into and being able to counter it should be top of your list that is something i've learned preliminary uh, in play testing early on and it's definitely just good to note uh, maybe not every deck needs them but if you're worried about your opponent interfering with what you do or doing something broken themselves exhaustion is going to be so important to have uh, and also, oh my gosh, another exhaustion. What is happening? He's exhausting the Daphnis. Okay. Wow. Two exhaustions out of Celtic. And why would rank one, you gross alter, play it? Why not rank two? Rank one can be the fearsome attacking table. Destroyer's armor on Gunda. Nice. We have exactly one plus three plus three. Oh my gosh. 13 AC, four skill, one hit point, level three. That's a pretty good card in this deck. I, I've seen uh, like Adarami decks and whatnot that have Destroyer's armor and just the whole Neus or uh, not Neus, Artificer set. That's definitely good. Cardinal Skellis is going to move Genova back at the expense of Davinus. So if that gun is able to swing and take out Davinus, you're going to have Genova stunned in the second rank. Like Rack has said, uh, Graham is hanging on by his fingernails right now. He is just not really gaining any momentum, just doing what he can to stay alive and not really furthering his own strategy now we do have a reverse of last turn where celtic only has one card in hand and Graham does still have four with his whole army either spent or stunned i doubt he's going to be doing a whole lot but you never know so the yigro's altar going to kill the yigro's altar to put a charge on yigro's altar could use return to us next turn to get back the yigro's altar If he has two core drags in hand, can maybe get another turn. Yeah, maybe. It's possible. I mean, the teamer, like you said, helps hold ranks. Three hit points is pretty solid. Oh, he can use those counters to repose. Unless he rolls a one. Oh, my gosh. So he can't use the counters to repose. I just grabbed my headphone cord and yanked my whole laptop. My bad. Wow, that one was terrible. What did he need? I mean, he still needed a 10. But to get a 1, he could have used one of those counters, like the 12 to take out a Jackals or something. Man. So going to stun the Teamer up, so even if that Gunda takes out the Davinus uh, with Axe of Faith or something, that Teamer will still be there to uh, hold the Genova in play. Three cards left. I wonder if he has more characters or if they're going to be dead spend order type things. We have a Lord Jaxohannes, so not really going to do a whole lot in this matchup unless we see another Destroyer's Armor later on. That Gunda's going to die at end of turn. We see Sanuris now. Hopping in play quite the little opportunist to take out a Cardinal Skelis or a Teamer. And a Nodwick to get back the Litany of the Dead. Celtic going to end up missing, I think that was a 6. That's just going to be a 13. So that is going to miss. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I didn't even think about getting back to figuring. That works too, yep. Get back to figuring of protection, get another character to help hold ranks, and if it ends up in play next to Genova, hey, 
even better in uh, rank two. He is going to grab the Litany, though. I wonder if he's going to name Gunda or Jackals next turn. Probably not Gunda, since that one dies at end of turn, so he could say Jackals. I, I do tend to agree with you that the figurine would have been the better play here, but uh, Graham knows what that last card in his hand is. I don't know if it's going to be beneficial or not. It's also possible he forgot the figurine was in his discard pile, because I... That seems like something I would forget, to be completely honest. Wow, the Lord Jaxahannas and the uh, the front rank team are going to die. And then Gunda dies, so I assume it's end of turn. I think they're both passing, if that Gunda is dead. Because he kills it with the Egros altar, and there's the pass. Okay. Yeah, nice, the Destroyer's Armor makes it... Uh, Level 3, and Gunda is plus 1 level when it reacts too, so it's level 4 for the Egros Altar to kill. Graham gets a 16 for initiative, so probably going for So there's a 2, so that could come in handy. He could force a 2, and a 7 probably not going to do as much, but that 2 just worth noting he's got that in his back pocket. Oh, it hurts me so much that Litany of the Dead's on one side and Nodwick's on the other. Why would you do that? Okay, he's cloning the Litany, that's why. So first action, he is going to name Jackals with the Litany. Okay. And now he's going to slide it up to the middle. Oh, what a monster. So Sanaris can still swing and potentially take out the Cardinal Skellis and level up. He does have four charges on the Yggros Altar. He could potentially spend two of them here um, since those Jackals aren't going to be swinging. And it was not exhausted, uh, the Litany, this turn like it was last turn. Celtic is using Torrin, so he ditched the Nemtok. He's thinking very carefully about uh, what he wants to grab, what will help him best in this circumstance. So if it's the first turn, you're not inflict an additional wound. If it's not the first turn, power attack. And both of those are pretty good. Obviously, the first one's better, but... And there's the Kareen Drak you were talking about. So his uh, decree is going to be to play her and then stun her up. So that'll help hold ranks a little bit better. I maybe would have swung... Oh, no, because he can just react with Fotraka. That's right. There's the dust to dust out of the table. Um, target level X character within three ranks. Who is he going to target? Skellis, probably. Looks like Graham got it. If he, uh, if he killed the Skellis, could have gotten something like a Sithusk or something like that. A draw card, get a few more charges on the altar, but... Not going to do it this time around. <clears throat> And he's got another Litany of the Dead, so he can play that next turn and name Jackals again, presuming he wins initiative. Uh, if he doesn't, Celtic can go ahead and swing with one of the Jackals first, um, or he might have a return to us or something to where he'll want to name Gunda. I maybe would have swung with that Cardinal Skellis on a Jackals to see if you can take one out, since he could react with Fotraka, but they're not going to be able to swing with that wound on him. If you swing and try and kill the Sanuris, he'll just react with Fotraka, and then he can swing an additional rank away, but... I don't know, Cardinal Skulls could potentially take out a Jackals. He's going to get another figurine of protection and pop it out. Uh, Celtic got a Nemtok, so if it isn't the first turn, Nothra getting this rank of power attack, so he'll have to get that up to the front. Uh, before it's able to do anything relevant. That's such funny art. Why does he look like he's going fishing? Like, there's the reeds, there's the water, he's got the net, everything. Like It, it looks like he's going to try and catch a few trout or something like that. He's going to force the 7 on Celtic. So I guess that is going to cause Sanaris to miss... 
See, it's a 7 plus 6. Yeah, this is going to be a 13 with one react from Yugor's altar. So he actually found a use out of that 7, and he still has the 2 to use as well. Got a Feral coming in for Celtic as well. Thank goodness not the first turn, otherwise uh, be able to pop right up and swing. Man, okay, if Graham can pull this out after battling back from almost dead... Could be fishing for fourth edition elves. This is true. They lived in the water. They were aquatic. So Ashara's title may spend order to target another character you control gains bonus to attack AC and skill equal to its level till end of turn. Until end of turn target opposing character as a penalty. So that's essentially a uh, a Davinus boost right there. A uh, what we call the double Davinus. It gives Davinus a bonus. Gives your Davinus target a penalty. So there is the Sithosk, and Fotraka's going to fall, or move up, rather. That is an interesting move. I wonder what Celtic could be thinking right now. Going to see the figurine of protection move up from Graham now. Let's see. Two cards left from Celtic, one from Graham. And this is still game one. My stream is showing 42 minutes now, so they're probably around 37 or so. <clears throat> he moved up for a trucker to get some value before the stun. Out of Feral. How does Sanuris have four wounds on him? What did I miss there? Or is it the penalty from the title mace? Forcing Pharrell to fall. Okay, yeah, that's the penalty from the title mace on Sanuris. That makes much more sense. I guess. I, I feel like you have more value from letting Nemtok stun all the way up rather than Pharrell. But <clears throat> I guess he probably wasn't in a position to get Nemtok up this turn. So he'll wait till next turn. Cheat death after an opposing character kills target lower level character. Inflict one on this character. Return the target to play in the same location and orientation. So he uh, swung probably on the Sanurus would be my guess. Or maybe a Jackal's. Did roll an 8. As cheat death considering entering play, return the target to play. Can't from Litany. May not enter play. <clears throat> so yeah, the Good catch there, Gracchus. I definitely would have considered it entering play. I didn't even think about that exact wording on the Litany. So you cannot cheat death there. The Litany stops it. Good catch from chat. Because, yeah, I saw his question. Is it considered entering play? It's like, yeah, it says enter play. But then we have the exact wording from Litany of the Dead. That does make it a bit easier to decide, which is nice. Yeah, severed or consumed from within. Those are the first two that come to mind generally. A one and a three for uh, Graham's counters. That's going to be interesting. That one could be huge. Unless that one was his initiative roll. That one was his initiative. Okay. So he got the uh, three and the 20. That 20 could come in pretty handy. It'd be a lot funnier if you got the one and the 20. I'm sure it's happened. Now that teamer is finally ready in the front rank. Let's see if he can do a little bit of damage. Probably not going to end up dying this turn. Jackals. I thought Jackals was going to swing, but then I saw a counter go on Torin. But I'm not sure why Jackals is sideways. I thought they were ready last turn.
Oh my gosh, another incentives. So he'll probably wound Pharrell and maybe wound Sanuris. React with Fotrucka. Or is he just going to make Sanuris do the strike without wounding it? Let's see. Yeah, he's shaking it, so he's not wounding it, but he is going to make it do the strike. He wants to save for Trucka's ability for later, since you know Teamer can both swing and repost if need be, but he's probably going to try and take out that Cardinal Skellis with Sanuris. I wouldn't be surprised to see him remove two charges here, just to try and make sure he can hit that. Let's see, that's a two. If you add... Two charges, that makes it a 10, 13. You have to remove all three charges to kill the Cardinal Skellis because Graham can force that three. And, you know, if you remove all three charges, it's going to hit anyways. Graham's not going to force that three. He's got it for later. So that kind of puts Celtic in a tough spot with that Sanuris, especially when he rolls a one. <laughs> uh, unless that was the Feral, potentially going a little bit deeper. He can only remove one charge for swing with Alter? I don't think so. Four charge character makes a minus charge or remove a charge. I thought he removed two at a time earlier in the thing, and I was pretty sure you guys in chat were the ones telling me he could do multiples. I don't know. I could be completely wrong on it, too. That's not a card I've played because I'm not a big Nothrog player, and there's better cards than Chosen to a degree. I guess it depends on what you're doing. It could be partway decent and chosen for sure, but I just haven't used it a lot. He can use two separate altars. Okay, that's what it was. But not two charges on the same altar. Since you have the one react window, I guess. Okay. <clears throat> that makes more sense. So uh, nothing, nothing happening off of that incentives, which is surprising. And all of a sudden, things are looking a lot more even. Uh, this this game one could end up going to time. You're probably pretty close to 45 minutes right now. That's only halfway. That's... Wow. Let's see. So we see another figurine of protection from uh, Graham. I keep wanting to say Celtic and not Graham because it says Celtic on his playmat right here. And then right here it says Celtic's turn just for the turn tracker that nobody uses because it's dumb and irrelevant. But So I see the Celtic and then I look down for Graham's name and it's also Celtic. So I have to remember. And Graham, you can see it down at the bottom right there. And Celtic, I can see it up here. My camera covers it for you guys, but... And there is the Hero's Gambit off of the Feral. Can you cheat death with the Hero's Gambit? Since it says the death can't be negated, but it's... Oh, it's after an opposing character kills. Okay, so no, you cannot. Joansky redeemed Brine Fiend. All right, you are the first one to redeem points. Got the Brine Fiend. Speaking of the camera, now you guys you guys can look at the Brine Fiend for the next minute or so. Yeah, I put all those uh, rewards down in there for the scales and whatnot, and Gracchus is the first one to redeem them. I might have set them a little bit high, but I know like in Chris's streams and whatnot, I'm up to like 9,000 points now, so I just wanted to give some outlet to redeem them and maybe a couple to save up for or whatnot. I don't know. I just kind of put the first stuff in there that came to mind just to kind of get a little bit of customization and whatnot to the channel. Uh, so let's see, what did I miss? Hero's Gambit took out a figurine of protection in rank two. He grows Alter did its thing. Uh, Feral died and Torin fell to correct. And then Celtic played a Sithosk, and Graham pops out the other figurine of protection from Genova. 
Now Sothusk is going to spend order to draw a card. Um, so both players with four cards in hand. Uh, knowing full well Celtic is probably going to kill that Sothosk can get four more charges on the Yggdrasil altar. I just can't believe how much use that thing is getting that late, this late into the game. That is such a good card. And Taltos Railing comes out, not one I've seen too much. So he's a wizard and a fighter. Comes in at level four. Spend order, return target item you control to its owner's hand. Put any number of item cards into play from your hand that you may legally play. Does Figurine of Protection retain its item trait when it's in play as a character? I don't think it does. But that would be a nice little combo if you got a wound on the Figurine of Protection. And yet the uh, GG emote was just a preset. I'm going to be getting at least one uh, actual emote. Um, and hopefully a few more, uh, just again, to add some more customization to the channel, uh, to make it a bit more personal and, uh, it isn't a weapon shield or whatever. Yeah, but when it becomes a character, I would think it would lose, it says put it into play adjacent to this character as level four cleric. It doesn't specifically say character, so maybe it's an item character. I don't know. It's cool if it works. Otherwise, it's just a nice little tempo card if it doesn't. See, the first mass blessing of the game out of Celtic. Uh, so that'll buff his front rank. Maybe should have done that before the incentives. I think he got a little bit greedy there. Talos only picks up certain items. Oh, was he eroded to weapon or shield or something? I can pull that up on a uh, on a cordless. He gets back the mace. Return target item you control to its owner's hand. Put any items into your hand. He's errata to match Taltos the Hail. Taltos Relian. Gotcha. Yeah, sorry. I am in a browser right now, so it's going to be a little bit behind on untap when I go back. Uh, interesting. Okay. All right. Untap going to catch up. Whoa! What just happened? I'm looking at a card for one second and somebody scoops. Celtic scooped? No way! Wow! Hats off to Graham for that win! I don't blame him. I mean, like you said, he, he needs to win quick. But that's the thing. He got, like, everything he needed to win quick early on and couldn't do it. That's incredible. Man, hats off to Graham for fighting through that. It did not look like he had any business winning. I see a Karindrak as a tempo play turn one. So even... What's he exhausting? The react? Okay. <clears throat> so the uh, counters for Genova this turn are going to be a 4 and a 17. That's a pretty nice little duality duality split there. <clears throat> we see a Ged Morak. He is going to be able to hold ranks a lot better now. Uh, getting some meat back in rank 4 and 5 as opposed to the uh, later on... Or as opposed to the uh, right off the bat incentives to collapse ranks. That's a much better start for Graham. We 
See, a litany of the dead. Has it been cracked yet? It will not. That's going to be cracked and named Gunda, though. So he's getting one swing off while he can. Wow, this is looking much better for Graham. Obviously, he's got a lot to plow through on Celtic's side. And <clears throat> being a game behind now, Celtic is not going to concede, uh, obviously. Unless it's looking, like, really bad and there's no point to keep playing. But... Uh, 50 minutes into it, it looks like this will probably end up going to time because Graham is not a fast deck. He's just going to shut down those Gundas for the turn. <clears throat> He's cracking it. He's adding a note. What's he naming the note? I'll bet it's Gunda. It's a Gunda. <clears throat> Gonna stun the Ged Morak up to four as a little uh, incentives insurance. Although may not perform actions or enter play, but it can still incentives because uh, Fortraka is performing the action. Uh, Gracchus, uh, to put it lightly, wants to see the Nothrog lose. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. <clears throat> Uh, Rain, by the way, I was focused on the concession and the start of the new match, but uh, I, I know you did end up losing, but congrats on top eight, and frankly, Gracchus, too, for just as far as you guys made it this tournament. Gracchus, it was a lot of fun to watch your match against uh, uh, Forged Cake, uh, to see you be able to make that top eight, and then Rain as well. I think, didn't you win the second, make it to top four, and end up losing? That, that was impressive as well, so... Congrats to both of you guys, and I know we had Midge in here earlier who made it as well, but I'm not seeing him lately. Don't congratulate Rain. Etra's the devil. <laughs> Just because he's a bad matchup for your deck. That is a really good hand for Graham, just to get some characters and some meat up front. And hey, I will congratulate top eight as much as i want until i make top eight because uh, until then anybody who makes it there uh, i uh, have a good deal of respect for him once i make it there uh, i have much less respect for the position i'll know they kind of just hand it out to anybody i mean frankly with gracchus getting there you kind of already have that precedent but pretty good start for both of them here i mean no incentives for celtic but the Mass Blessing, two Cargregs, a Feral. Like, if he didn't have the Litany, those Gundas would be going off. Man, Dilchon's such an annoying card to play against, too. Not as bad as Gracchus recurring those frickin' Ginnicord Initiate and killing him with Rama. Not as annoying as that, but still a, a really good dev kind of stalling type card. There's the incentive. So he probably got it off the card, right? And now you can see those Gundas do some stuff. Oh, they can't react, though. So you can wound one of them and react with Fotrucka, but because of the Litany, they cannot react. So they can't suffer a wound and be okay with it. So you can... Probably wound a Gunda, react with Fotrucka, and then wound Feral since he's dying at end of turn anyways. I think that's probably the way to do it. But we'll see what Celtic ends up doing. And only one card left for him after that. <clears throat> Can a Litany Gunda melee strike with incentives? I remember that is a ruling I specifically did here when I... I don't remember if it was against Karua because he had incentives or uh, what, but I know he had Litany. So you can target the Gunda with the incentives because it's Fotraka performing the action. Uh, it is doing a melee strike, but it's just the wording of Litany still allows it to slide by. So, yep, uh, Pharrell and Gunda, just like I thought, with the React on Fotraka to keep Gunda alive. 
Um, so both of them probably going to go an additional rank going for Justinian. That, uh, that get Dawson and get Morak is going to make it a lot more difficult to get to Genova this game, though. That is for sure. That Pharrell could be uh, dead meat before it swings, too. Performance Strike isn't technically an action unless you use an action. Exactly, yeah. That, that's why it works with incentives. Since the strike itself is not an action, it's just 9 times out of 10, you have to use an action to generate a strike. <clears throat> so, a Dilchant could swing and take out a Pharrell before it's able to swing uh, using the 17 counter. If the truck has already, react, already reacted, he could have a, uh, shoot, what's that card? I was just looking at it. The one that reacts to give plus one HP before something dies. Well, I'm going to step away for like three seconds just get something to drink real quick. All right, and we're back in business with room temperature water bottle. And I see I have been demoted to a brine fiend again, so I will pop that back up. And now I can leave as much as I want. You guys will never know. Looks like I missed a soothing waters. Okay. So that would have been one way. Uh, final blessing. That's the one I was thinking of earlier. I guess plus one hit point. Uh, so that Soothing Waters, what the frick did I miss? How did he kill everything? <clears throat> two Justinians, two Dilchant Keepers, everything's dead. Wow. Okay, I just need to stop leaving because I left for three seconds to look at the card. The, uh, the Errata Dev, and then I go get more water. And it is toast over here so what looked like a really good opening hand for Graham turned into an even better opening hand for Celtic Graham looked like he was set up nicely to just stall this thing to time but with a good hand here Celtic can potentially force his way back into this game he does have a little bit of planer to plow through and that Corian Drat can stun on up but uh with those Gundas able to swing now with Litany out of play uh there is a chance a 19 and a 16, probably not what Graham was hoping for. Probably planning to play a bit defensively, but I was going to uh, exhaust the react, I think. So Genova is going to be spent. What did he exhaust? <clears throat> did he exhaust the Gedmorak? I think that's what it is. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's probably a good play. And there's the incentive. So that's why he exhausted Morak, because he probably would have just named incentives. So it's definitely better to exhaust than the Genova. The 16 and the 19 also not going to affect Celtic too much this game, I don't think. But you never know. So going to wound both Gundas, and he has the Foot Trucker react in case uh, Dilchon Keeper swings and is mean to one of them. Gets a 5 and a 20. <clears throat> 19 misses Dossett. That is such a feels bad. How did Morak die? I see... I see three odds and an even. Morak is dead. Did he Axe of Faith? No. <sighs> Anyone in chat know how Morak is dead? Power. Oh my gosh, Incentives gives power. <laughs> I completely missed that. 
So, oh, that's why he rolled so many times. Okay. I don't know how I missed that. Like, up until now, that's what, our fourth copy of Incentives we've seen? Ooh, Celtic really starting to claw his way back into this. It's funny that Incentives and Wyvern Flames are both such good cards, and they're both, they, they use the same art. Like, I know Wyvern Flames is largely bad with uh, Gush and pre-death reacts like that, but still. So we're going to play the Balrog's first test and spend Cardinal Scalus and Genera of the Moon to defeat it. Uh, so now he has a three hit point dragon in the front rank. <clears throat> going to going to swing. Incentives is kind of max that for Trucker where it's amazing. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's still... It's an above average card. Uh, I would say it's still pretty good most of the time. You're going to see it in decks aside from Fotrucka. It is a lot better in Fotrucka. And it's better with Gunda in general too because of the React. But it's still a very good card. And Rogues have access to it too. I know not... Uh, yeah, it's always two melee strikes out of a support rule. Exactly. Like even if you don't wound and give the power attack and plus five, it's still... Two melee strikes out of a cleric or a rogue. When you can mass bless for free and then use your spend order to play incentives, it's going to be pretty good. I, you're certainly right that it's much better in Fotrucka than a lot of other stuff. I will agree there 100%, but aside from that, it's still a pretty good card. So Cardinal Skellis going to hold up, and it looks like Graham is playing the hold ranks as much as I can game, just like last game. <clears throat> Worked pretty well last time, to be honest. Got a car, Greg. Not going to be able to Daybreak React this time. Unless that's one that's still out there that I completely missed. I'll bet that's what happened. Car, Greg, going to swing. Yeah, it's a level 3 rogue action, so it doesn't even have to be your warlord that plays it. And uh, in this deck, too, you can have... Uh, who's the guy that's going fishing? Nematok or something like that? He's a level 4 cleric, so he can do it, too. Got two wounds on the Malrog's first test, but still kicking as of right now. Now Celtic is looking like he's in rough shape. All of a sudden, his ranks are looking pretty skinny. He does have a San Urus, But you're going to get oh, a mass blessing to bolster the ranks. Potentially keep it alive a little bit longer. So, going to swing probably react twice. Once with each altar. Yep, so you're swinging at a plus 10. Let's see where he's going with this. Oh, 26. That's going to take out the first test. And you get to react off of St. Urus. Now he's hitting for two wounds apiece. That was a huge roll right there. That 16. Because that was plus 10 swinging at 21 AC. So he still needed an 11. 50-50 shot. Discarding the cheat death, mass blessing will go away. And we saw a halo secrets right there at a end of turn from Graham right before both players passed. So Dossett is going to be alive now to swing. I have to imagine he'd try and take out that Yigros altar while he still can. If you send both strikes there, uh, hopefully hit with that seven and maybe force. Let's see what his second roll is, if it's going to be high. Or are they... They're both threes. Okay, that's pretty surprising. And now the Mass Bless, and that makes taking out that Egros altar that much harder. So we see a Corindrak, so no Mass Bless out of Graham here. But using her React, he is going to stun her all the way up, just to help hold ranks a little bit better. Yes, yeah, Sanurus is 100% the threat right now. Being able to inflict two wounds, he can take out Figurine of Protection. It's not planar. Then he levels up to three. That is going to be a big problem. 
So he's going to spend order with Sithosk to draw a card and then kill it with the altar to throw four charges on. I was a little bit surprised he didn't do that end of, at end of last turn, but I guess he just wants to get an extra card this turn, see if he could bolster ranks a little bit. Graham's going to swing with the Dawson, and that's going to be a 13, so that's going to miss. And then 9, that's a 12, that's going to miss as well. So both strikes from Dawson miss. And another Sithusk. We also, I forgot to mention, got the Staff of Kizazi from Graham. So that's pretty good. He's got one charge on it for now. Probably just going to charge it up these next few actions, unless he has something specifically he needs to play. But that's Sanurus on... Uh, I have to imagine it's going for figuring of Protection. Unless he has Incentives and it's going to Power Attack, the Karindrak. But man, then he's going to be three hit points. Then he can take out... He's just going to snowball real quick if you can't do anything about him. Kazazi can at least keep readying Dosset, and it does not say non stun, so it can ready the Karindrak if need be. He can cancel a melee strike with the Halo Secrets. Oh, not a melee strike. My bad. He cannot cancel a melee strike, but he can cancel this here dust to dust. I'm kind of surprised he didn't. Because he doesn't have a lot of targeting other than melee strikes that I know of. I mean, dust to dust... To... Oh! Well, he, he didn't do it because he targeted his own guy. That's clever. He went after the Sithusk, so that's why he didn't use Halo Secrets to cancel it. Uh, yes, just a level X character within three ranks. DC 18. And he got the two, so just what he wanted. And there's the Nemtok. So that he cannot get up to the front rank this turn, unless he has something in hand that lets him, but can get it up there next turn. Or, no, maybe two turns. I don't know. But that's someone else that can play incentives. That's something else that can give power attack to Sanurus. And now we see a teamer from Celtic and a or a, a teamer from Graham and a Tauren from Celtic. Staff of Kazazi is completely charged up at this point. Teamer's going to stun up. I wonder if he's waiting for the Sanurus to swing to get Teamer up front, and then ready him. Maybe that could be a good play. Because Dossett's strikes aren't really anything to write home about. Granted, teamers are smaller, but he does have to fend repost. Corinne's strikes are smaller as well. So as of right now, Dossett seems like the best readying target. Or that. A person I'd rather have a 7 and a 3 than a 6 and a 3, but... Whatever. Once we turn off the character, when the rank attacks, if he attacks... So... Does Ged Dossett react on Sanurus? Because his attack is... Oh, no, it's plus three attack, so it's a five now, so forget that. I was just going to say, does Dossett react before or after the girl's altar? I'm not entirely sure when that would add up. Karindrat going to swing. Those jackals are a nice, shiny target, but you have to send these wounds at Sanurus. I understand getting two strikes away from the Jackals, but I just I would have sent that roll at the Santa Riffs, personally. <clears throat> Where was that one going? It was just a 16. So that's probably going to miss, I guess. Ooh. Now the Santa Riff. Oh my gosh, he's level three now. He doesn't even need to react. He's hitting... Two swings for three wounds apiece. Wow, that's a huge play from Celtic right there. He can't go after the Dossett because Graham can't force double odds, but he can take out this Karindrak and whatever comes up after it at will right now. Because he's swinging at five. His base stats are three, three, thirteen, four, one, three. 
permanently gained. So those would be base stats. So he was swinging at three, but he's at eight. So he's swinging two plus eights for three wounds apiece. Then he can Yigro's Altar too. At least make one of them a 16, make one a 12. That's insane. He's swinging. <clears throat> Graham's trying to charge the staff of Kazazi back up, but Celtic knew he had a couple actions before he had to uh, worry about that going off again. Or I guess he couldn't. He has to spend it, so he couldn't do it again this turn. <clears throat> Where is the Sandaris going to swing? He's level 3 now, so he can't react on the... Uh... Now, that's an interesting one. How does this react work with the Destroyer's Armor? Because that says they're base stats. So I would assume that would override his permanent level gain. But then does that level gain add to the new base stats off the Destroyer's Armor, making him level 4? I don't know how that would work. That's, that's confusing. It, it's good. Right now, however it is. If it's one wound on the Corinne, I don't think he realizes that she's dead. The level gain is a bonus. So so his current bonuses are even on top of... I, I just thought those added to the base stats, I guess. So that, so he's level 4 right now? Plus 1 level. Okay. Yeah, that Corinne is very much dead. Sandoris reacts. <clears throat> I'm going to see a teamer come up, and I know that the second strike is going to go for teamer before he can uh, defend or repost. Or I guess figuring your protection could uh, do its thing too. So Graham gets the choice here if he targets teamer, if he wants to redirect to figurine. He does not. He would rather have the teamer die. That figurine is pretty bad at protecting right now. <clears throat> we see another Corinne fall, and all of a sudden Graham is starting to crumble a little bit here. Celtic, who is in pretty bad position to start the turn, has bolstered his ranks, and things are looking a lot more even now. This game has certainly been a lot more back and forth than uh, most matches are. And another incentives. Wow. So Sanuris is going to suffer a wound. That's a bold play. He does have three hit points, but still... I wouldn't want to put a wound on him just for plus five attack. Because that power attack does not matter word one right now. Going on the car, Greg, it looks like. React with Fotrucka. So we get a couple strikes. Oh, I guess he can target an additional rank away with the Sanaris. So yeah, Joxahannis. Okay. It took me a second. I got there. I figured it out. It just, it's, it, like I said, it's Monday. I missed it. <clears throat> so yeah, dead Joxahannis. And car, Greg, now swinging at plus... Well, he didn't need to wound the Sanaris to uh, take out the Joxahannis. He could have done that with Cargreg. Why did Graham not force a three when he was swinging on the Dosset? Wait, he did? How did the Dosset die? Did Sanuris go for Dosset and Cargreg went for Joxahannis? Oh, it's a spell! That's right, that's one of those tricky ones too. Incentives is a spell. Uh, so even though the characters doing the melee strikes don't ignore planar, because it's generated from a spell, they do ignore planar. Good catch, Rain. Thank you. <clears throat> so yeah forcing that three is good on standard melee strikes but does not matter for the incentives See, so yeah that's what i'm saying he had the car greg kill the joxahannis he didn't have to wound the sanuris to take out the dosset 
since that's where he went with that strike. And using the incentives to get around that planer was the best possible time for it. Celtic going to win initiative here, so he's got at least two strikes with Sanuris uh, before Graham can even do anything about it. Graham's rolls are going to be a 5 and a 17. And it looks like we could... I mean, I don't want to speak too soon. Things have looked like they're over multiple times in both games, but a Celtic is in a great position here, and we could end up seeing a game three, which, ooh. They've only got about 15 minutes or so left right now. Graham just needs to stall right now. I mean, obviously not like blatantly stall, like sit there and hum and ha and take your time, but he just needs big, beefy characters and to stay alive from that Sanderis. Oh, he still wants to have wounds, so it can reach back for that. I guess that makes sense. Kind of caching that for later, and he can react with Fotrucka if it gets in danger. He's going to kill something and get extra hit points, so I suppose that makes sense. Oh yeah, yep, even a stunt Sanderis can make melee strike rolls. Ooh. That's gonna hurt. <clears throat> Sanderis gonna collapse that rank 3. Not sure... He's got the Halo Secrets, he's got the Lord Joxahannas, but I'm not sure how much he has to rebuild that third rank. He could just be a sitting duck now. I mean, if Celtic has incentives, it's over. But if he doesn't, has he played all three yet? I see two. There's the third. So no more incentives from Celtic, but there is another Sanuris. Breaking those ranks is going to be huge. He's going to use the Staff of Kazazi to ready the Karin. Oh, but he's got another Destroyer's Armor on the center. That is just such a good combo. I love that combo so much. He's going to exhaust the equip, so that'll spend the Sanuris. That is a good time to play that. <clears throat> That's going to be huge. And no incentives to make it work. Now, Pharrell's not going to be coming up. Boy, obviously things look bad for Graham right here, but if... <laughs> If he can keep these strikes at bay and stall the rest of the turn, I don't know how much left he has. He can certainly charge up that staff of Kazazi while Celtic is uh, incoming here with Gambit. Oh, he could. With the Tauren, he's got to find one. There's one in the discard. I don't know how many he runs, but presuming it's at least two, he could find that. Could find Suicidal Charges. Is that in the deck? We didn't see it game one. Discarding the Axe of Faith since he has plenty of multi-wounding on the Sanderus itself. <clears throat> Wounded Sanderus. Oh, yeah. Wounded Sanderus can go straight for Jenerva. Graham is lucky that all three incentives have been played. And there's the Hero's Gambit. Wow. Oh my gosh! The exhaustion! What a play, and I almost ripped my headphones cord out. Wow! So he got the Hero's Gambit with the Tauren, and he's able to exhaust it. What a huge play. What a huge play he readies the corinne you think it's to swing but then he has the two exhaustions in hand and a lord joxahana so maybe he could rebuild ranks here a little bit if he has a cardinal skelis he can slide Genova on back he has a teamer wow and celtic's passing too oh it doesn't just delay his death to next turn i mean he he has a chance he has a chance. I would hate for the championship to come down to a roll-off, too. It looks like that's my, that might be what it ends up being, but you never know. <clears throat> I 
Yeah, but depending on how long they stop the timer for for that rules dispute, he has to stall for any more five to t anywhere from five to ten more minutes. That's definitely a lot when both players are passing. It seems. <clears throat> Oh, championship has no time limit. Oh, that I did not know when I signed up to stream this. <laughs> okay, so I could be here a while. If tied, interesting. Okay. That's not a rule I had ever heard. If that's the case, I'm going to need even more water. Speaking of stalling, I've been make that stuff last all night. Well, I'm definitely pulling for Graham to uh, to go to time here for everybody's sake at this point. <clears throat> oh, that Geneva's in trouble. That Geneva's in trouble. Oh, so many dice. What's with all the dice? Who won initiative? I don't even know. Everybody rolled d20s. Okay, Graham won initiative, so he's able to spend back Genova. That gets him out of reach from Sanoris and could help him stall long enough. He's going to swing with the other one. That's a good play. Captain LSE redeemed the Brine Fiend. So I will head out for a little while here. We'll let Brine Fiend take over at the uh, expert commentary. So Sanaris is going to swing, removing charges on both Ygrel's altars. That's going to hit. Who do you go for? The Corinne. So that will hit. React. Oh, yeah, this is looking, looking pretty bad. So now all Celtic has to do is take out one more. Uh, essentially, he has to not roll a one in the next three strikes. Because if he takes out a rank one character... Okay, perfect. Yep, so now all he needs to do is swing, take out that Joxahannis, send the second strike at Genova. Mass Blessing is good, but I don't think that's gonna cut it. So he's doing rank 2, so that'll put Genova at 21 AC. It's a good play, but will it be enough with the two of Ygrel's altars? Oh, Grim does not have a Corinne. That would have been a real big play. I think he's got all three this game. Or maybe just two. I just see two in the discard. How did he get the uh, Taltos Relian out in addition to the Mass Blessing? Okay, so here it comes. Brian Fiend is going to go away now. Oh, man. That is going to do it, I think. Game three. That is just brutal for Grandma. My stream is showing an hour and 29 minutes. So they probably paused it for... I have the 45 second or so intro. They probably paused it for five or so to look at rules but still man the buzzer beater to force overtime from celtic <clears throat> was looking much better for graham at the start of that game but then celtic manages to pull it out of the hat at the end i had triple incentives man that's just brutal And we get the game three. We see a, a mass blessing from Celtic to start things off. Here comes the first action incentives. Can you imagine? Oh, he's going to exhaustion that. So no incentives this turn. Unless he has a Timuk and is able to incentives off of that. He could do that. That's a possibility. We see the teamer from Celtic. He's going to slide Genova over, getting ready to move her up. 
Going to dust to dust a Dilchon Keeper, probably, so he can find a Sanderis or a Karkreg. Graham is not going to get it. What's the just, why is it just Indian spending? Reflect. After target character inflicts wounds on one of your characters, target must see with a magic save. One of the wounds are just by one of the target suffers with more. Oh! Get it! Oh! Couldn't take out the altar. It was a good play. It was worth a shot. One, two, three. Oh, he went for the Justinian. Okay. I thought he was going for a Dilchunk Keeper, not the Justinian. And another Dust to Dust. Try and take out the other Justinian, perhaps, I guess. Yeah, that six skill is stupid, but even rolling an 18, that's going to get it every time. Oh, can you imagine if he premonitioned the first dust to dust? That would have solved the problem of both of them, and he'd still have a Justinian. And that would have given Celtic two dead cards in hand, too. Instead, he gets to search, because the dust to dust killed. And now we'll see another Mass Bless. I thought that got exhausted. Why is it not in discard? Did it not get exhausted? Mass blessing, exhaustion. Where? Oh, the exhaust was to spend for trucker. That's right. I'm just so used to exhaustion being a mean card that cancels everything. Was that mass bus sitting there the whole time and I just re-noticed it like an absolute idiot? I think that's got to be what happened. Yeah, that's it. Wow. The real MVP right here. Now he's going to swing on the teamer. Let's see, did that hit? I guess not. How did that not hit? He's got the mass bless. Oh, Dilchon redirect. <clears throat> uh, Dilchon is such a fun guy. One ended up dying, though. Ooh, Hero's Gambit. Spicy. One strike at plus seven on the teamer for three wounds. Right? Plus seven for three. React with the altar. So I think that gets the teamer. Dead teamer. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the, the, my estimation was before looking at how many charges were on the altar. So now Graham is in a bad position. It looks like they're going to go ahead and pass. And watch, now we will see a first action incentives from Celtic, and that'll just wrap stuff up. He does essentially, oh, he's not going to get initiative, though. So see, a seven as one of Graham's counters and an 18 that one is bad for Celtic obviously but uh, he could have had incentives turn one and just not played it since he got spent obviously um, and now he has the chance to get it on turn two so it is 
relatively likely he has one, but it doesn't look like it. He's just going to dust to dust. Litany of the Dead. So, yeah, he could name Gunda and slow him down a little bit. <clears throat> I think Graham did just fail that, though. He's going to reflect. Finally got an altar. Took the Warlord to do it, but he took one of them down. Now he's going to Litany and name Gunda. So that's going to slow Celtic down a good bit. If his last three cards are characters, Graham can bolster ranks back up. You are correct. That does mean he doesn't have incentives. Otherwise, he likely would have done that first action. You think he does have incentives? Nah, I would have played it right away to uh, collapse his ranks. Well, he's got Justinian in second. He Not playing incentives gives him time to uh, spend a character up and bolster ranks. Cyneris is good, but especially now with that Litany proving the Gundus to be useless this turn without incentives, you definitely have to play that if you have it. Graham's actually going to pass the Dust to Dust roll with a nat 20. That's spectacular. Could have been cautious because of Premonition. I suppose this is true. That could be the case. Uh, having said that, it doesn't look like he has it. I mean, it's well into the turn. He could be saving it for the end. And he's going to swing on the Jackals of Morn with the Dilchon Keeper. Force the 18, which will take it out. And then he'll play another one, which is going to pop back up. And he's going to exhaust that with Justinian. Wow, Graham holding on with everything he has right now. And there's the th the Sithusk, so he can run into incentives here, maybe. Imagine if he top decked that. And the back alley tavern, wow! Whatever Celtic does, Graham has an answer to it. That is unbelievable. What does he have in hand? He's got a Lord Jaxohannes for uh, for Graham. That's going to be huge if he gets the Santa Wrist with the uh, armor again. And, ooh. I guess you got to play that back alley, but I might be would have spent the Jaxohannes up so he's ready in rank two. He's got the Corinne. What's the react? Stun her up. Yep. <clears throat> yeah no kidding not knowing the context that hand isn't gonna be very good celtic not able to play whatever he got with the sathosk ended up giving uh graham essentially three more cards with the other back alley that he got so bit of a whoopsie right there uh off of that sathosk and things look a lot different now than they did at the start of last turn we're talking about if uh if a trucker had the incentives, now we're just talking about how long can Graham hold on for and maybe try and collapse the trucker's ranks. So Graham gets a 17 and a 2 for his roll, so he gets to keep... Oh, no, it was an 18 previously, not a 17. This time, I'm not going to leave for water. I am going to phone a friend. Because I am actually completely on stream. Completely out. And I am not going to make it however much longer this is going to be. Let's see. Let me know if I miss anything quick here he 
You know what? I'm going to pop over to the brine fiend just because I want to while I'm getting the water. And there's nothing you can do about it. You don't even have to redeem points. This one is on the house. So let's see. Jackals of Morn going to swing. It looks like Dilchant going to attempt to cancel Justinian doing his thing to work with it a little bit. And now the other Dilchant going to try and cancel. Look at that, just like magic. Oh, that's so much better. My throat doesn't feel like the Badlands. Mother Deanne, so not one we saw the first two games. That would have been so clutch a couple times if he was able to get that. She is unique, so maybe only running one or two of them. I understand that. It's going to exhaust the Nodwick. So Jenerva is going to be spent. No premonitions possible now. Which does mean that that opens the way for uh, incentives if he chooses to play it. Nodwick trying to get back the Litany. But Celtic reminding him that it's my turn and I am going to play incentives. So wound a couple Gundas. Take out... Uh, Justinian, and probably Joxahannes would be my guesses. I only have one altar with no charges, though. His ammo is a bit... Uh, bit... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. There's just not much in the supply right now. And Mother D can cancel some strikes, too. So the first strike gonna hit... Let's see where he was going. My guess is... Oh, Dilchon. Okay. That'll do it, too. And now, yeah, Mother D can cancel the second strike. Depleted! That's it! His ammo's depleted. <clears throat> Thank you, Gracchus. So, yeah, one more strike. Mother D gonna cancel, just like you said. And that was definitely the least ravaging incentives out of all three games. So we're going to see that Litany of the Dead get re-equipped, and Celtic is going to swing with Gunda before they get turned off again. And now he's got Nodwick to recur the Litany, just keep those Gundas at bay. Granted, two of them are going to die at end of turn, so I guess it's not as big of a deal. And that will really uh, not be the best for Celtic's ranks once those Gundas die. He's going to be in a uh, Pretty close to the eye form after that. This is going to pop the litany named Gunda. So two of them going to die. Two of them not going to be able to swing. And he can't even incentives with them since Fultrucka has already spent off the incentive. So he's going to kill the Sethus for four charges. And he's got the figurine of protection now, too. So pop that out, get a few more characters. Well, one character. Mother D does only cancel the strike against the dev, but don't really have to worry about strikes against the figurine right now. <clears throat> he's got a Feral with an extra hit point. And he's going to give the extra hit point to the Gunda, too. So only one is going to die at end of turn now. That's that's definitely a big help. Torin going to discard the Soothing Waters. But now with the Feral and the two hit point Gunda. This is game three, Midge. They hit time. Uh, but Celtic got the buzzer beater kill to force overtime. So with about... Five minutes left on the timer, he managed to take out Jenerva with a Santa wrist to force game three. Graham had an amazing comeback in game two. Celtic showed a lot of, or 
Graham had the great comeback in Game 1, Celtic showing amazing resilience in Game 2, and now Game 3 showing to be potentially the best of the bunch so far. It's just been so back and forth across the board. A bunch of very good games. <clears throat> now we get the San Urs, so I think Celtic's ranks are going to be just fine. Uh, only one Gunda going to die, and now he has plenty of characters in rank 1. Graham, of course, able to bolster his ranks a good bit, too. Has a nice little army sitting there. But he's going to have a lot more swings coming from Celtic than he can deal back to him. He's going to use the 2 counter. <clears throat> oh, he already did that. My bad. The red just caught my eye. Celtic going to swing with the Cargreg. That's going to be a 16 on the teamer. Yeah, swing at him while he's stunned. Can't repost. And going to pass. All right, only one gun to dying. Uh, Celtic's front rank is killing my OCD. I absolutely hate it. I wish he'd make it look a, mo a lot more like Graham, so it's nice and neat in these nice little columns. Oh, I love it. Celtics is absolute chaos. Ah, so yeah, one Gunda died, and that is it for Graham since he got the extra hit point on the one. Looks like Graham got a seven for initiative. Rain now saying he's going to use that against me. Well, Celtic fixed it now. But yes, it would be pretty distracting if you had your rank 1 all over the board. Oh, that would drive me crazy. And that would just be mean. Don't do that. So Taltos Relian is spent. Okay, but Corinne is going to swing. Looks like Gunda swung as well. No. Yep, Gunda swung. Mother D canceled it. Okay. So Corinne is going to swing. <clears throat> and now she's going to ready. Maybe not. Graham is thinking very carefully. He has a 16 and a 14, so he can force some hits here, but not going to be able to force misses out of Celtic. And that Yagril's altar is back online with the 5 ammo since he killed the Gunda at end of turn. And let's see what he wants to do here. Gonna play another Karindrak. That's interesting. Yeah, you have to kill that Sanurus before he gets big or before he gets the armor. I mean, only 21 cards left in decks. So he's gone through half his deck. He's got Torin. Looks like he forgot to take the counter off of Torn, because I don't think he's done it yet this turn. So he can find the armor for Cinerus. You have to kill it. Oh, Sofik. That's pretty good. Um, So what do you guys think he's looking for here? Because like I said, I don't know his deck completely. Would it be Premonition to try and get rid of the uh, incentives if he plays it? Or what? what do you think he's grabbing to the top? Celtic is going to Torn. Peace. Oh. The uh, Arak set item, I believe. I don't know what it does offhand. But I can picture the art for it, for what it's worth. It's going to swing with the Sanaris now. It's only going to hit for... Two, but it is enough to take out the teamer. And now, yeah, that Sanderus is just getting big. That it could prove to be the same problem that it was last game. It's gonna snowball so fast. I'm 
Nodwick gonna spend, get back Litany of the Dead. Wonder what he's gonna say here. Maybe Jackals, just because it has he's got one that can swing. He's got others that can come up. Or I guess only one other copy. Celtic is thinking it's gonna be Jackals, so he'll swing with it before it gets uh, shut off. He's gonna get an 18. That is gonna hit. So one wound on the Corinne and the four not gonna hit. Even with removing a charge. I feel like you got to kill the Feral here for four more charges. I don't think he's doing a whole lot in rank two, but... I guess if you're able to get him to rank one, he can swing next turn, but that doesn't seem like the goal of the deck, it seems. Like you said, blitz and aggro and get as many charges on the altar as you can and use them to murder things. Graham's turn is going to take a little bit to uh, think about it here, a little bit to decide. Looks like someone tagged me in... Discord, let me just see what they said real quick. Uh, oh, it's just build a warlord. It looks like someone replied to me or something. I will look at that later. I was just making sure it wasn't uh, regarding the stream or the match or the rules or something like that. Yeah, I know we're going to be here for a minute. <laughs> well, I appreciate... Uh, Everybody who has subbed up to this point, since I did not anticipate this stream going this long, it, it the support is what keeps me going. The support is what keeps me streaming to, into late into the night on a work night. So thank you to everybody who tuned out or at a pretty good viewer rate as well. So thank you all for being here and for watching this with me. Instead of making me commentate this alone and giving me someone to interact with while we're doing this, I greatly appreciate it. And because of the length, I will not have the VOD up tonight. It will probably be up sometime tomorrow evening when I get home from work. Um, my plan was for the stream to be over about a half hour ago. Um, and I was going to work on the thumbnails and get that and my last couple videos up. I am not chugging the water. I need this. Rain, you are a terrible influence. As we get the return to us, probably bringing back a Gunda, if I had to guess. Soothing Waters. Oh, discard a card. Okay. He's getting the Jackals back. That's a good one, too. He's got the name Jackals with the Litany. Lovely. Oh, that was so perfect. <laughs> that is spectacular. Great play by Graham there. That's hilarious. Oh, you love to see it. Got to get Morak from Graham now. That's really going to help hold ranks. And unless Celtic is able to exhaust it, I would just keep it there in rank 5. Right now, your ranks are fine, so it can't be exhausted. You can keep those uh, uh, incentives at bay. So he's going to stun Prior S all the way up, so get more I can stay back. I think that's his plan, is to keep it there. And he could even spend it up to have Dossett fall up to 3. It's going to be ready next turn for initiative. <clears throat> So he's got Nemtok now, and we know he has one more card in hand that he can play this turn, since two of them are Jackals. Frankly, a third could be Jackals. There's a chance. It could be another Incentives. Nemtok can do that. It is Incentives. You called it, Gracchus. I do believe, Gracchus, that you had a Premonition. I try too hard sometimes. Uh, so Incentive is going to wound the Sanuris and the Gunda. 
Sooner is... His react is only once per turn, so he's not going to be able to get even bigger. But he is still going to be hitting for three wounds apiece. <clears throat> and he can target a couple ranks away. So that Prioress is probably dead. He could also go after a Karin. I have to imagine he's going to go after the Karin with a Gunda, though. And now Gunda's no longer showing a wound, so I wonder what he's got going on there. Gunda, like I said, probably went on that Karin, and now... Oh, it's a spell, so here he's going to go for Dosset with the Sanuris. Nah, he can kill Jaxahannas next turn. While he has the spell on the stack, he's got to take out Dosset. I would think, at least. Two. Let's see where it went. They're doing math. They're they're figuring it out. So Nurse was swinging at eight. It was the Dosset. Cause yeah, you can just swing and take out the Dosset or the uh, Joxahannis next turn. Whereas you're only, you, I think you're out of incentives now. Or do you have one more? He's got one more. Okay. <clears throat> but that is what I would have done. So it was probably the wrong play then. Shoot. Ooh, a one. Gunda gonna swing. Where's the Gunda gonna go? Probably on the wounded uh, Taltos. Or everybody's gonna pass. Wait a second. Why? I'm confused why the Feral stayed in rank two. I would have spent it up so you have two strikes in the first rank this turn, or kill it to put four charges on the altar. Keeping it ready in rank two doesn't make much sense at all to me. I guess if he wants to play another fourth level character and keep everybody else exactly where they are right now. Only thing I can think of, unless he just wants <clears throat> more meat in front of Forchuka. He realizes it's only 10 AC though. It's not like it's a lot of meat. Sanderus being level 3 can still react after he kills Jaxahannas too. So you can swing, kill Jaxahannas, then equip the armor. Yeah, you miss a strike this turn, but yeah, I, I, I think that's worth taking out the uh, the get Dosset. Well, you can. Yeah, this game has been so back and forth. Uh, I'll note as well, I added to the top of the stream between the Warlord logo and the layer text. Uh, I've said this in Discord before. Uh, 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 yeah, I'll look at the Morak in a second. Oh, he had incentives to Morak, so nobody... So Celtic can't play incentives this turn. Uh, so yeah, I, I said this in Discord a few months back. I think back during Strategic in late January when I started streaming. Anybody who subscribes has the option to get a custom Dragon's Lair sent to them from me. Uh, one per subscription, just so like I'm not... Like, if you subscribe every month, I'm not sending you 12 of them. Just so I don't have to keep buying them over and over again. But if you subscribe for the first time or later on and you didn't get one, reach out to me on Discord with your address, and I will get one of those mailed and sent to you. Um, so just let me know, anybody who wants a custom Dragon's Lair with channel art. Actually, I have one right here. It's going to be the small camera, so not as good as the giveaway. But there's the front, and then we've got... Uh, custom art on the back with my credentials. Yeah, more act naming incentives is big, and we do get peace, so that is probably what the progress searched out. Spend an RX set item. Hey! He moved it. Target a character in your army. Target a character with level equal to or lower than. May not attack till end of turn. That's pretty good. I mean, it can keep the Sanuris at bay. Uh, 
All right, what did I miss as to either Ferala spent? <clears throat> Got a Jackals. Graham got a Davinus. Okay. Stun that centerist, baby. Two tens from Graham, too. That's very interesting. What do we got here? Return to us. Oh, get more Jackals. Oh, he got them all, though. Oh, he's going to get the Gundas. Or an talk. Oh, Pharrell can swing from the second rank with wounds. Okay. I completely missed that. Once again, thank you, Rain. So he's going to get a Cargreg and a Gunda. Okay. And an Emtok. No, he's discarding the Emtok for a Cargreg and a Gunda. So you may discard a card. Hey, hey, Midge is gifting a seer to Sangington. Thank you, Midge. That gift really startled me too. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie about that. I was reading the return to us. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Ah. Uh, you may discard a card, target one, two. If you discard a card, lower level characters, and you discard a tree targets, put them into your hand. Okay. And Necromancers do it regardless of class restrictions. <laughs> That's hilarious. It, it was so loud on my headphones. I just, it came out of nowhere. That's, I love it. So the Jackal's gonna jump up. And Graham has a Ring of the Savant now, too. So we can get back a Mass Bless. Can get back premonition, reflect. Oh, he doesn't actually have a mass bless this this game. Uh, so premonition and reflect is all he can get back. <clears throat> Say no to jackals. He did. Pop the litany, name jackals. That's a good play. I mean, he's got the one up front. You know he's got one more in hand since he didn't discard it. Could potentially even have one more in hand. More Half his hand could be dead right now. Litany with Nodwick is so good. Got us a Thusk. So he can't play jackals. He can't play incentives. Ooh, and now he's got the title mace. <clears throat> this game is over. I don't know if it's over yet. It, it, it's it been so back and forth. It's looked like it's over in each of the three games, probably three or four different times. Trucker's about to get rocked. Yeah, could be. So he got the Sanera stunned right now off the Davinus. As of right now, though, Celtic is pretty shut down. Can get the Litany back next turn with Nodwick. Can't do it this turn. He's got the Tidal Maze. He can get back a Premonition with Ring of the Savant. He's got Peace. Grim does have all his pieces in place, whereas most of Celtic's pieces are in the discard pile at this point. It does seem like it's going to be over, but uh, you never know. Celtic really didn't look like he had any business winning uh, game two. Oh, yeah, Graham with Staff of Kazazi. If he gets that out, he's got everything in place. Shouldn't the Morak be stunned? He just chucked Jackals. Torrin. He 
Just got a premonition. Okay, Ring of Savant, the premonition. There it is. Yeah, he chucked the uh, Jackals with Torin. Because <clears throat> he put the counter on Torin, chucked the Jackals, Pete 5, grabbed a card. I was like, is he trying to premonition the Torin? That doesn't make much sense. And then I saw the scribe check, and that made much more sense. <coughs> Cargra going to swing with a charge from the Yggdrasil's altar. And it'll hit Corinne for one wound. And it looks like he's got one more strike this turn. Everybody has swung out. Unless he's got more stuff in hand. Spending peace. He doesn't even get that one strike this turn. Oh, he does have Gunda and Cargreg in hand. I forgot about that. He's got the plus two from that Cargreg. He's got a plus three from another Gunda. Yeah, but one of those cards could potentially be a Jackals. You don't know for sure, since he's played the two he got last turn, but he could have got a third one. I just think it's super funny he got him back with the return to us just to be fodder for Torin later on. That's pretty great. See the Cardinal Skellis now, so he can move Dinerva back if he's feeling uh, maybe a little bit scared about some of these ranks collapsing. It's not a terrible move. Move the Davinus up, that works too. Another Sanura, so there's some strikes he can produce. Oh, his last card could be the armor, too. Uh, like you said, Gracchus, but he wasn't able to kill the Lord Jaxahannas this turn. He's going to swing and take out the Karin. And react with Sanurus. That's pretty solid. So he has two Sanurus with at least some semblance of charges now. I have to imagine he's going to kill something here to put more charges on the altar. No, he doesn't. Okay. He's just going to pass. Going into the turn with no charges on the altar. That is worth noting. White Celtic roll again. I don't get that. <clears throat> Oh, they tied. Oh, look at that. They got the two 12s. Wow, the 19 and the 20. Okay. I just see multiple initiative rolls, and I think it's Graham doing his thing, rolling for the counters on Genova. Got a 14 and a 3. Probably not going to come in all that handy. And this is why I would say it's not quite over for Celtic yet. I mean, you have to look at his first rank. Compare the two Sanuris as well. Morak going to keep the incentives uh, name on there. Uh, wisely so. And only 11 cards left in deck for each of these gents. Jackal's going to swing before it gets shut down. That litany should be discarded since that's only till end of turn. <clears throat> we got a mass blessing now. That's going to be big. 
You know what, while they're doing this, I'm gonna pull up Nightbot on my phone and see if we can finally get it to work for giveaways. Because I would like to give something away to everybody who stuck with me through this entire stream. Nightbot has not been behaving at all, ever, whenever I need it to, but I'm just hoping that maybe the more I try it, it'll, I'll get through to it at some point. Yes, I authorize you to interact with my Twitch chat. Let's pull up a giveaway. <clears throat> a Celtic played an exhaustion. That seems relevant. Oh, he exhausted the mass bless. Okay. So he can't premonition this turn. Okay, we'll we'll keep that open for a little bit. We'll see if as people chat they get entered in. Hopefully, we'll see. Got another mass blessing. So he's up to 10 now. And with no wounds, he can't swing into that second rank. So that's going to be plus 10 AC to the first rank. No charges on the Egros altar. I have to imagine he's going to kill this spent jackals to put four charges on it. But I could be wrong. That Pharrell's only going to be swinging into the first rank. Don't be a bad knight, but it's going to. Like, I have no faith in it whatsoever. <laughs> I'm just going to need to find another way to do giveaways. I've thought about, like, rolling a D10 or something and counting up in chat, but then you look at the last 15 messages, are all from Juwanski, and that just makes it really difficult to make it an even chance to give away. So... I'll figure something out. Uh, uh, I couldn't really find an easy way to reach out to Nightbot support. Most of the forum questions I got were essentially, your internet sucks too bad. <clears throat> There's the Staff of Kazazi for Graham. Only two cards left in hand for Celtic. Worth noting that Litany of the Dead is still out there, too. Has not been discarded yet. That is from last turn. Because Nodwick has not been used to grab it back. Uh, no, Nightbot doesn't even list, like, like, no users are showing up. Yeah, I have eight viewers currently. Um, no, not, it, it, like it's connecting with my Twitch to the degree that it shows that it connects. But uh, aside from that, it doesn't do anything. Why he talks, I don't, I don't understand. Oh, Gracchus. <laughs> I get it now. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, no, like, people as they chat are supposed to show up on the users list for Nightbot for the giveaway, and nobody just ever shows up. So, like, I can quick, I can click uh, roll it for the giveaway, but it's, it's going to say start giveaway. There are no eligible users. Do I need to click start giveaway? Do I need a... Oh, maybe we'll try that. Maybe as you guys chat now, this will work. The button's blue now. What does the button being blue mean? Okay, now he got the Litany of the Dead back. What's he gonna name? What's it going to be? I 
or is he not going to pop it off yet? Yeah, it's probably worth saving the Litany for next turn. You can pop it first action, name Sanaris or something. <clears throat> there goes a Halo. All right, yeah, I, I'm just unscrewing with Nightbot right now. It's it's not working. Looks like he used up one of his threes while I was working on that uh, off of Genova. Got another Jackals coming in. Is that the uh, Tidal Mace? Doing its thing? Yeah. Let's smart to target that Jackals before it jumps up. Priorus getting even more AC, and now she's got some attack. She can swing, too. Ah, oh, this match is gonna go so long. It's got the 19. That's a really solid roll. Oh, he's gonna force the 14, though. Who's going on the Jackals? Nice. It's almost over. I don't know, man. We've said that every game <laughs> several times. I don't think it is almost over. I think they're each going to deck before it's over. I could be wrong. <clears throat> you didn't? Okay, true. You did have the premonition type call uh, on the incentives about, what, 10 seconds before it happened? So maybe you're right. You're a seer? Really? Because you just played a necromancer. All your friends are undead. Gonna move the Davinus forward with Cardinal Scala, so he'll fall up to the second. Did he think the Mass Blessing was a character? I think that's what happened. So he's not going to move him up. <clears throat> a Necromancer just predicts people <laughs> won't stay dead. That's the best description of a Necromancer I've ever heard. play dragon ranching decks i predict i'll play dragons i mean does that make me uh, a seer gracchus i don't think it does buddy <laughs> kind of <laughs> it's gonna jump the jackals up so he'll be swinging at a minus one plus one onto these 25 31 ac characters and he's nat 20s. Oh, so close to a nat 20. Wow. Is he going to get the 20 here? No. So remove a charge. So even if it was a 19, this one would have hit at the plus one. Uh, had he rolled a 19 there, it would have hit. That kind of seems like a waste of a charge, needing a 19, but... Whatever, he's going to move the Feral up. No, swing with the Feral, okay. <clears throat> and they're going to pass. And so the championship match continues. This is just unreal. So seven cards left in a deck for Graham. He did keep one card. And five left for Celtic. 
Looks like Morak is going to keep incentives. Can't say I blame him there, knowing there's one left. Chances are he has it. But I suppose you never know for sure. So Graham won initiative and then got in 11 and a 15. got another mass blessing okay pop that ac on up watch cardinal skelis is going to swing for the kill on something so he has a premonition he can throw off exhaustion What's that exhaustion on? Is that on Morax React? That seems a little late. <clears throat> That's the only thing I can think. So he can't title mace this turn. Not the end of the world, I guess. Genova gonna spend order? Premonition. I didn't see what he had out. Was that another Mass Blast, I assume? Because that's a good one to Premonition. Uh, premonition should be removed from game. I don't blame him too much. Uh, whenever Lost Bread dies, I send it to discard out of habit instead of remove from game, so I don't blame him one bit for missing that. Did he forget to change the color on those counters, or did he use both already? I think he forgot to change the color. Here we go. Davinus doing his thing. Who's he going to target? Is he going on the Sanuris? Who's it going to be? Davinus is stunned. Wow, Davinus loses. Roll die and add Davinus' skill. Oh, he used Litany on Sanuris. Okay, so who was the Davinus going on? It had to be Fotrucka or Yigrel's Altar to lose. I guess it could have been Torin, but that's just ridiculous. Could have been Nemtok. And now with Nodwick, he can get the Litany back this turn, too. They are now one hour from when they pass the time. That at least pretty close. 55 minutes. Okay, that's where they're at. But this match is just insane. It's back and forth. Celtic's got his army. Graham is throwing up big hit point characters to try and stave him off. And Sofik is going to swing. Hits Nemtok for one. Hits Nemtok for two. That'll kill him. Chip away at his army a little bit. <clears throat> Let's see. Fultrucka. Got one armor in the discard. So he has two armor left. Okay. 
could maybe have another return to us. Looks like he's got at least one, maybe two Acts of Faith left. <clears throat> he removed the counter from Torin. Oh, he's got another Nemtok. Wow. Gonna move the Nemtok up. He's got another Jackals. Staff of Kazazi is gonna charge up to four. Which means he can read Oh, he can ready Davinus now. Hooray! Everybody's favorite. Killed the Torrent for the Yggdrasil Altar. I mean. Only five cards left in deck. He's seen them. Nothing else Torin can do at this point. I don't blame him for that. Let's see. Where was he swinging with that? Seems like it misses. He's got another figurine of protection. Okay. So that's his second, I think. If this goes much longer, you guys are going to see someone fall asleep on live stream. So if someone, like, message me on Discord or something, hopefully my phone will buzz and it'll wake me up a little bit. Get a pop the figure in your protection. And it is going to correct ranks and fall up to two. <clears throat> Mother D still has yet to cancel a strike this turn, too. Sanuris not able to attack because of the litany. Not getting incentives. Yeah, they're getting sleepy, too. Well... For Graham, it's only... I mean, he's Pacific time, so it's only 740 there. That's not too bad. I don't know where Celtic is. I feel like he might be Pacific, too. I don't know. Celtic is in San Diego. Oh, okay. So this is the, uh, the West Coast battle. Because Graham is in San Francisco. Oh, does Staff of Kazazi get equipped to Mother D? I thought it was on Jenerva. I thought it was down there on uh, her items earlier. I guess not. Oh, he picked it up with Taltos. Oh, nice. Okay. So he can ready someone again. That makes sense. That makes sense. There's Taltos. Let's use it to ready Corinne. Okay, I guess, yeah, the strike is better. The plus three is better than Davinus. Yeah, the game is over, but how many steps does it take to get to that point? Oh, okay. He's got the uh, the double staff. I see. So the Taltos. Oh, yeah. It's over. I see what shenanigans he's got going on now. He's got the double staff. Use Taltos to bounce it. Keep readying other guys. Readying Taltos. Very nice. So then, yeah, that one goes on. 
Okay. <clears throat> It's gonna grab Litany of the Dead back, or is it not? Does he only have the one staff? Am I mistaken? Is it not infinite? Yeah, use the Ring of Savant to get Mass Blessing back. Use Nodwick to get Litany of the Dead back. Oh, it's not infinite. Okay, I was thinking. Because if he had two, he could play it. Ready Corinne. And then spend with Taltus. I don't know, man. I'm sure it works. I'm not going to figure it out right now. With two, I feel like it could be infinite. Because it's not unique. But yeah, if he just has one, obviously it's still very good, just less infinite. In fact, not infinite at all. Less than infinity is any number. But in this instance, it's one. Got a premonition. I didn't see what he had on the field. I was looking at his mass bless. Gracchus, what did he premonition? Was it a mass bless? <laughs> it was a mass bless. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, hold on. We have... Uh... We have Iceman in the chat. Wow. He's just been watching this game like a hawk. Waiting to interject with the rules. <laughs> Celtic was quick to hop on that. He cheated. I win. <laughs> So why doesn't it work? Was premonition? Not playing from your hand. Oh, right, right, right. I thought you were saying he couldn't premonition the, uh, um, he couldn't premonition his mass bless. Yeah, no, he can't play his own mass bless. I get it now. <clears throat> We see peace. We're going to spend the figuring of protection targeting probably that big mean Gunda would be my guess. And yeah, so he's got two strikes on the Pryrest, two strikes on the Corinne. Can ready one. Bounce it with Taltos. It's okay, Midge. We forgive you. So we're shaking Gunda. So he did decide on the Gunda with peace. And I think Celtic concedes. Graham says GG. So that is going to do it. That means Graham is your March... 2022 Ancients Champion running Genova of the Moon. What a match. Definitely the longest match of Warlord I've ever seen. From Graham's amazing comeback in Game 1 to Celtic barely being able to send it to overtime in Game 2 
to just the grudge match of back and forth in game three. And then just after a long, grueling match, Celtic, or uh, not Celtic, Graham finally able to get his pieces in play, get the staff of Kazazi online with the Taltos Rally to keep those strikes coming, and ultimately run Celtic out of gas for his deck. What a match. What a great uh, effort from both players. Uh, there were instances several times where it looked like both players could win, and Graham able to pull out a huge win. So congrats to Graham. Uh, I would like to hop into their Discord chat and talk to both of them right now, but as long as this went, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, I'll maybe talk to him on a later stream. But congrats to Graham and a great effort from Celtic, too. Uh, it's a great Fotoraka deck, very well piloted. Uh, I will let him know I am going to have to head out, unfortunately. Uh, not able to interview this time. I don't want it to go too much longer, but... Um, yeah, I'll have that VOD up, uh, probably sometime tomorrow. Like I said, I'll have to make a thumbnail and get that uploaded, but thank you so much to everybody who tuned in, everybody who stuck around, uh, through the entire stream. And thanks again to everybody who, uh, uh, subscribed during the chat as well. I'll see you guys on the next stream.